So yeah, this is a very Hello World talk. We'll be meeting with Perla Arduino. Um, so a quick little jump back down memory lane. Um, when I was uh, you know the kid in the bedroom, I was hacking on my Apple II Plus, um, and uh, it was a very different place. Um, I soon became like the whole you know like Microsoft kid, right? Um, and now, you know, I've been like organizing this for a workshop, I've done Yaps and all that good stuff. So I'm all, all profiled, open source, all that good stuff. So Arduino, besides a funny word, what is it? Well, it's a, it's a microcontroller. Uh, it's a little computer, basically. Um, it's an IDE, so there's a cross-platform IDE. Um, and then, they're like Perl, you know, there's certainly a culture around that. I mean, I was on the, uh, I'm on the mailing list, and recently, not fairly recently, there's a pretty good discussion going on about what to do about strings, because basically you're programming this thing in C++. Um, you're kind of insulated, and there's some funny things that go on in the background to insulate you from some of it, but um, it's, uh, it's there. But you're dealing with strings in C, basically, which is kind of ugly because these things can run web servers. Which, you know, now that's string parsing woof, all over the place. And uh, what do you do? Uh, you're trying to balance the. It's the whole Perl core problem again. If they if they make string libraries that are more friendly to artists and makers, well then that adds more footprint. But then, if they take it away, then it's harder for the artists to do interesting things because, let's face it, if you're an artist or a crafter or someone doing something, you don't want to deal with a lot of weird bits. You just want your thing to work. And they're trying to make this thing very accessible. But anyway, so it's also some amazing magic. Like, you know, there's just a magic that goes on. Um, anyway, so it comes in many flavors. And um, this talk was written before Uno came out. But uh, doing really Nove is what um, Uno is now. Um, Uno comes out with more features, but uh, like the reprogrammability I already mentioned and some other stuff. Um, nano is very small, and I thought I brought a Nano with me, but unfortunately I did not. But they're very small. These are very you know, easily found. I've got a few pictures. But, um, it's a little bigger. Lily Pad's a special one that's made for wearable computing. Yeah, so if you were to have, like, make a bike jacket, is a pretty decent example. Um, and you can then use conductive thread to run some wires down to your fingers, and so when you turn left or right, you could actually have arrowed LEDs on the back of your jacket turn, you know, uh, and blink appropriately. But doing the Leobe is kind of the, 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 the standard vector when people think about this stuff. And then the Mega's bigger, gives you a lot more eye. Now, my, my, my little jaw drop moment with um, with Arduino was with um, the simple blinking LED. Uh, I, I was eating ramen noodles, and I still do sometimes, even though I'm out of college. But uh, you know, it takes like three minutes to cook the ramen noodles. So I dropped the noodles in, and I walked back to my computer, set the timer for three minutes, plugged in the Arduino. I already had the ID installed. Downloaded the uh, blinking LED sketch and started blinking. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. And then I made it blink faster and slower. I'm like, that's kind of cool. And then the timer went off. And I'm like, okay, I did all that in less than three minutes. That's kind of fun. I mean, granted, it was just a blinking LED, but once you know you're turning something on and off, it could be anything. So yeah, I was pretty excited. Um, so the Nano has a much different footprint, but you know, depending on what you're doing, obviously memory and I/O pins scale accordingly, and there's good charts for all that kind of stuff online. Maybe, um, there's the lily pad. These are washable Arduinos, but I wouldn't exactly put it in my washing machine. Um, Mega, obviously, you can tell is bigger, more I/O pins. Doing the Lenovo, and this is about thirty bucks. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of different shields. What I showed you was called a wave shield. You know, you might think of a daughter board or um, different names, but in, in Arduino land, they're called shields. Um, an example of a shield, this is one uh, called a telemate. 
that lets you do composite video. Uh, so you can flash back to Atari 2600 era graphics. Um, they put them up on the screen, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, my son was very excited. Um, there are motor shields to help you control stepper motors, all kinds of motors. Um, there's GPS stuff, there's cell phone stuff, custom built shields. A friend of mine just built a game shield to help you with Wii controllers and stuff. So there's lots of cool stuff. Do they have the blank breadboard shields? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, usually in kit form, and I'm going to show you, I can show you a few more things too. Um, that's the telemetry I just showed you. So, um, you want to get something out to the um, CRT that you have hooked up to the telemetry, for instance, the one I just showed you. You just simply print to the serial line. Boom. And the other cool thing is this: there's a serial monitor inside of the IDE, so you would also see that there. So you know it's, it makes for it's, it's integrated right with the IDE, um, and you can see what's going on. Or you know you can use GNU screen and lots of stuff to, to see what's going on in the serial. Um, I'll talk more about what those functions are in a minute, but just that's a basic sketch to or program to get something out to your TV screen. I mean that's just pretty friggin' simple. Okay, so um, a great pairing are, are the uh, Dream Illinois Ethernet shields and um, a Dream Illinois or a Nuno now and the Ethernet shield. So it's about 70 bucks, but now your device can live alone on the internet. It doesn't have to be attached to the computer. We can just go and do what it wants. I see the SD card. Yeah, it's from a, yeah, it's a new model. So a few terminology things um, in Arduino land. Programs are sketches. And some of the history there is anybody familiar with processing, the graphic environment? Oh, if you haven't played with processing, that's a whole new addiction. Um, go check that out. But they share the same IDE. So, they're, they're, I mean, it is a fork, but they're trying to keep the IDEs pretty in sync. Um, so, that's where that came from because it was from a graphical environment. They're called sketches. Um, there's two main functions that you think about or work with. Um, there is a setup function and a loop function. So this is one way we are you're kind of deviating a little bit from C. I mean, main, we don't even see main at this level. Um, but setup gets run once when you're power on the system. And so whatever initialization you might want to do, or if it's just like I showed you, just print something to the screen and be done. You know, maybe that's all you want to do. And then loop is going to run forever. So the hello world of the microcontroller world is simply a blinking LED. And the Dream Lenovo, which, oh, I didn't even tell you this part. In that three minutes, I wired up the LED. No resistor. I'm going crazy now. But I just put it in a couple of pins and made it blink. Because at the time, I didn't know there was one actually on board. But there's actually an LED there. But anyway, um, so this is what the ID looks like. Um, now, granted, I'm not an IDE guy, I'm kind of a Vim guy. Uh, you can actually use an external editor with this, but it's a little kind of clunky. Um, but, you know, your mileage may vary. For the most part, I just work in the IDE and just live with the things that are pretty small. Um, I use a lot of people's libraries, and it's pretty good. They don't have CPAN, but, you know, you can find libraries. Um, they do have a really good example directly. Um, and you can find that in the off the sketches menu for examples. And this is straight from that. Um, so we're going to initialize um, pin 13 to be an output pin, which is contrasting with an input pin, so it could be I or O. Um, and then we're going to loop, and we're just going to write 13 pi. We're going to turn it on. We're going to delay a while, and then we're going to turn it back off, and then delay again, and just do the cycle on the loop. On forever. I'm just going to sit there blinking. Yes? So, loop, there is no actual loop in loop. I guess there's a, an outer loop that calls it, and once it returns, it just gets called again. The, the loop functions are void loop. Yes. There is no loop in it that I can see. So, so there's, an out, there's a loop outside of it that just calls it over and over. Yes, probably so. I, I honestly am not immersed in the, the gory details. So, 
I mean, I'm just going to bounce over this a little bit. So that makes a lot of sense what we're doing here. And then um, I forgot I had my hands blown up for you. So I'm going to show you a couple ways to connect. So I'm going to show you how to connect serially and through Ethernet. So serial is just USB. I mean, don't be scared. I mean, USB is still serial. Um, so um, just plug it right up and use our serial. Um, so pretty ex ex simple example of we're going to uh, use variable um, for 13, uh, pin 13. We're going to tell our baud radius for our serial port. Um, and I mean, already you can kind of see why this would be kind of attractive to be able to like talk as a keyboard or something like that that you already exist. I mean, it's standard in, you know, to deal with. I mean, fun stuff. Who wants to deal with this on the other side of the curl when you don't have to? But anyway, um, we're going to say it's again, it's uh, in mode output. And then we're just going to start a while loop, wait for um, something to happen on serial. Uh, if it's a one, we'll come high, and if not, we'll just go low. And then you'll just do that in double. And go on and do that forever. Do you want to catch anything? Uh, pretty simple. Okay. And that's stolen pretty much from an example right off the side, too. Now, this is an example screenshot of the um, serial monitor that exists inside the IDE. And so I want to make sure that you point out that this is the 9600 baud and your initialization code match, or obviously you're going to think something's really weird and wonky. Uh, and it's, it's, it is, because you didn't figure things right. Um, and so then you get this little text box where you can enter in one or zero, and you can see the output scrolling past, ons and offs. So it's a really nice debugging tool. Um, and then here's some really exciting curl code. All of this, cargo cult, I mean, pretty much. I mean, you, you don't, you just kind of copy and paste that. I mean, this might change a little bit on where you are, right? You know, where, where's my serial port? Um, but, um, you know, that's it. And then here's our money shot, send to one. And then the thing is going to come on. Yeah, it's for the guys in the audience. <laughs> okay, um, so, what are some of the weird things I've been doing? Well, one of the example things I've been doing is uh, I've had this concept for a while of, of a happy loop. And, and what's a happy loop? Well, it's, it's a circuit of electricity that's closed, and when it's closed, I'm happy. Um, well, what are some of the ways that, that gets closed? Well, uh, oh, ooh, I jumped ahead of myself. So, ever lost your keys? Of course you have. We all lose our keys unless you're some kind of freak. Um, and but we can fix that, right? We, we can fix losing our keys. You get a wife. No, no. You, you take an Arduino and a little bit of programming, a little bit of pro code, and off we go. So uh, because I'm a little masochistic, you know, of course I do everything as tests, right? Um, so this is. I, I was writing this for a non-pro audience, but it turns out some of the the. Uh, um, well, I'll, I'll show you this. Now I'll show you this. Um, proof has the cool thing where if you do colon colon after it's arg the proof arguments to prove, it eats the rest of the arguments as you know args, which is kind of cool. And so then you can just feed those into get out to get args or get options, whatever. And um, uh, so you can make parameterized tests. Which is kind of handy. Um, so I, um, anyway, I can basically run this, and I'm going to use a web server to check and see um, if my keys are there or not. And I'm using, I'm not using any JSON or anything fancy. I'm just checking to see um, if this text is there. My keys are home, or my keys are not home. Just a standard text check. Hopefully, that doesn't you know raise too many questions there. And then I can call that by this. And here's the double colon thing I was talking about. There we go. Thanks for that. Which I gotta say was pretty in love with when I discovered. Um, so we get output like this, you know. Uh, key check. Oh no, they're not there. Yes, my keys are there, right? Um, and of course, prove works properly on failure. 
So you can, I mean, if the test fails, the exit code for prove also uh, is an error code or success code, and you can further alert yourself from whatever alerting mechanism you like. Um, so, you know, you can put this in cron and whatever, have it email you or fail or something. Anyway, so what's the Arduino code look like? So this is exactly, uh, I may have changed that, but this is the code from the examples directory in the example sketches for Arduino. And it's called web server. And what this does is obviously it's going to set up a web server and then it's going to print the content and it's going to iterate through your six analog pins and tell you what their readings are, and then exit and do it again when you ask. So, now I will say um, it can be frustrating when you put two Arduinos on your network and you just copy and paste. Yeah, because if you notice here, you're actually giving it the MAC address for the device. So you'll obviously want to tweak that accordingly if you have multiple devices on your network. Um, but uh, so that's the example code directly from there. Now that requires the, uh, the, the, the yes, yes. Thank you. Good point. That requires the Ethernet shield. Okay. So uh, where I showed you those analog loop, this just got replaced in there. Um, so we're going to read digital pin, uh, I guess I should have put that, but digital pin 13, we used to do an SLI, and we'll print out, and if it's true, we're going to say, I know where my keys are, if not, I don't. I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy. Um, and so you obviously get output like this, you know. I know where my keys are, I know where my keys are. Um, and so here's my little prototype. Um, I just got two little uh, metal pins hanging out right here, and when I, oh, my keys are over there. Anyway, when I, this is no keys, so it would print accordingly, no keys, and keys, woo! And so when my keys are hanging there, um, it's cool. Now, it turns out this is not wife friendly either. My wife doesn't like to see tape or weird stuff around the house. so. Um, I'm going to have a blacksmith actually make me a nice little key ring um, and then wire it up to my Arduino so it can be wife approved. Um, but it's a nice passive way to connect to the internet. Um, so the other example I want to talk about today is a doorbell. So I live, um, so just to be clear, I was talking about that example, uh, Arduino being a web server, this one will be a web client. Um, the neighborhood that I live in is very um, communal. Uh, you know, I, I could be next door having a beer at the neighbors. I might be at the other neighbors feeding their chickens. I might have the kids at the park. And all these examples, I'm home. You know, um, but if I ring my, you ring my doorbell, I may not hear it, even though I can be home in like two minutes. So I can fix that problem. So. Um, I can send an email to my cell phone when someone rings my doorbell. Uh, now I'm doing some of this off on my web server, not everything on, um, on the Arduino. So I just have this stupid little script, you know, send mail whatever you want. I'm not trying to educate you on mail sending in this crowd. Um, but anyway, so then uh, we do. On the Arduino side, though, we're going to do avoid ding dong because that's the name of what happens when the doorbell rings. Um, we're going to do the IP number of the device, but we're also going to be the one of the server that we're talking to, um, and that's the, the other IP number. Uh, and what what uh, and what um, port number are we talking to? What about IPv6? I have no idea. I know I see chatter, but I'm hand waving at the moment because I'm not going to solve the problem. <laughs> I can only lazy web it and hope someone else does. Um, but yeah, it's obviously a real question. Um, so we're going to do the setup, and we're going to get our MAC address, and we're going to get uh, for debugging reasons. We're still talking serial. 
um, the makes it really nice. So then we're going to loop. Um, we're going to get our button state. Again, if it's true, very similar to what we saw before with the keys. But this time, you know, someone's at the door, and this is just debugging. Is all that is. Um, we're going to run ding dong, and we just, you know, someone's going to lay on the doorbell. We're just going to delay and check again if they want to be persistent. Um, you know, your mileage may vary, obviously, how you want to do that. So the delay is 2,000 in total if they press the button. Beg your pardon? If they press the button, there's a delay of 1,000, and then at the end, there's another delay of 1,000. That way they can't hammer the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then, so what does Ding Dong look like? Well, um, this is us with a little bit of debugging code. Calling our little Perl script that I showed you before is actually going to send us the text message. So um, we've already told it what the IP number is, right? That was in the setup. And then doorbell CGI is our stupid little CGI. And uh, because as cool as other stuff is, little CGI's still work pretty darn well. Little right. shell skips in there, I like to think of. Um, and we'll print, stop, um, or for whatever reason we fail. But if not, that's pretty much all we need. Um, so now I can get a text message, which is kind of cool. Um, another example um, that I was playing with is, has anybody heard of this? Someone's talking about the internet cloud. Well, I mean, part of the cloud, obviously, is, you know, how are, we were doing some cloud testing for with a guy, and we were wanting a way to bring the internet down, or, or the network down, um, with a backhoe. So we didn't want to necessarily cleanly bring the interface down with a script. We wanted to cut the line and then bring it back. It's a little different behavior, you never know. It might be different than bringing the interface up and down cleanly, right? And that's what we did here. So um, down here is in the box is a relay, and up here is two our two RJ45 jacks wired for Ethernet. And I forget my wire. Transmitter. Um, I wanted to make sure that. You know, we, when in the text te the, in the test script, we check to see can we get over this wire, and then we pull it down. We test to see if we can still get over it. You know, if we can or can't, and you know, there's magic to see if you're seeing what you should, and if the network should uh, respond accordingly. Um, and then we can bring it back up and still see. So you can see if you can really get across it, if it's really down. Um, but we can physically, rather than having Bob down there in the data center go, unplug 21! You know, this is Bob. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, so how do you remotely control that? Um, just as we were showing you how to do digital pin um, uh, output, one, you can actually do the same thing for your relay. You just sit yeah, whatever digital thing you want. Now those relays obviously are five volt relays, which are kind of what type of. That's just another picture of it. And so, anybody familiar with this graph for XKCD? Are you familiar with the Balmer curve? No. We are going to oh. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. What's going to work? So, I've never well, seen it. Though. I don't really ah, know. Yeah. Now, I'm not a true researcher. So, I, I'm really kind of wondering I mean, this is this curve. I'm wondering if it's really probably individualized for each person. But this is maybe a pretty good average. So, there's a. Um, our Duino drink shield, which is a breathalyzer that you can hook up. So, I mean, I certainly think, and this is what it looks like, you blow into this. Now, uh, it comes as a game, too, as a drinking game, as every technology should. But you know, that's what this LED thing is over here, which is pretty cool. I met him at Ohio Linux Fest. Nice guy. But anyway, um, they sell these at the Maker Shed and around. Um, so, as a challenge, 
you know, I certainly think that, you know, an Arduino plus a breathalyzer shield plus a get uh, commit book will lead us to some much better code. So, you know, I certainly think that on the, uh, the GitHub repository for um, Reflex, you know, you probably shouldn't be able to commit and unless your blood alcohol is where it should be. Uh, um, anyway, um, but there's all kinds of fun stuff to do. Um, the, the rest of this little talk, I kind of wanted to do some dog and pony show and do a little talking for people. Um, so this is another Arduino. This is another Duramil Nova with a touch screen. Um, now, this stupid thing is like 100 bucks. So, um, and unfortunately, even though after I spent that much money, I haven't had a chance to take the demo program off and actually do something else with it. Um, but it is still kind of cool. Is it multi touch? This one? I can't remember. Database a little bit. I am a normal uh, no, okay. it clearly gets confused with two fingers and does nothing. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry, I didn't have a color selected. Tiger Eagle. Gather the implications of the books would be proud. No. Looks like calculus a little bit. Uh, who? Have you seen the chaos later? Transactionally, on my side of the house, how to make it. Who makes it? I forget who makes it. It's um, it's basically a touchscreen synthesizer, and you can oh, yeah, yeah. program the axes to be different things. One could be um, pitch, and the other could be waveform or something. So one of the things that I've seen that's pretty cool, and I want to build an example of, is a sequencer um, from ball bearings and washers and an Arduino and an old LCD monitor. And what they did is they took a flat panel um, LCD. Um, and they have a sweeping line that will go across. Mm -hmm. And if there is something, if there's a ball bearing on the washer, then when it hits that, it'll flash. And it'll play the music. So like, there'll be a hi-hat or whatever um, set up. Um, it's really quite cool. Um, so cool. Um, I should show it. Um, but while it's coming up, so some other things that are really cool about these are when you control your um, servo motor, which are three wires, and your potentiometer, but there's a potentiometer which is also volume control, which is three wires. So we're talking six wires, which I'm not calling that. And that, then there's like 10 lines of code. Um, the Arduino reads analog input 0 to 1024. And then um, these are 0 to, well, this motor is 0 to 180. So there's a little map command to scale things correctly. Um, but you basically read it, you scale it appropriately, and then you send it out um, to tell the uh, stepper where to go. So as you turn this, then this moves. Now obviously you can turn this faster than this, and you have to delay in there and stuff. It's six wires and ten lines of example code, and now you're moving a motor. You've got half an edge sketch. I mean, that's just exciting stuff. This um, is an RFID reader from um, Parallax that I've already read a check for like 10 bucks. Um, it does serial. Um, and, you know, um, there's a whole kind of Seriously, an RFID reader? Yeah. Reader yeah. 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 Well, yeah. They have this, the box that you have to look in the drawers. But anyway, this is uh, an example of Cedino's older brick kit. Um, they're called electronics bricks. So you get like an LED, a big light. I don't know it needs to be red. I don't know who he's fooling, but that's the big button. Um, light sensor. Um, volume control or, or, or uh, potentiometer, excuse me. Um, this is um, just a, like a little breakout board they sell and then attached a stretchy thing that changes resistance based on its stretchiness. Um, and then uh, just a little buzzer. So, and then, uh, oh, and I have LED stuck in here too. 
Um, but, um, so this is just kind of my little prototype hacking around board.